We alluded to this earlier. Looking back on the equivalent circuit for the generator connected to a lossless transmission line at time t equals zero, since the impedance of the transmission line is z naught, a real number, we can relate the amplitude of the initial positive z propagating current to the positive z propagating voltage. That is, we can say I1 plus is equal to V1 plus over R, in this case, which is equal to Z naught. This is analogous to a resistor, which also has a real impedance. Although remember here, the transmission line does not behave like a regular resistor. So what is the I1 plus? Since we know V1 plus, we can calculate I1 plus. It's 0.25 over 50, which is 0 0.005 amps. And we can see that here in this video, which is for the current, 5 milliamps. This is also obtained from the computer code solving the telegrapher's equations. Okay, we're trying to work our way towards more and more realistic scenarios. Now instead of an infinitely long transmission line, let's consider one that is terminated by a load, which you can see here. What do you think will happen to the voltage in the current waves flowing from a generator and down a transmission line once they reach the end of the transmission line? Let's first consider a case where the same transmission line we looked at before is connected to a resistive load equal to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So here, ZL will be equal to Z0, characteristic impedance of the transmission line. We know that V1 plus and I1 plus waves are created at time T equals zero plus, and these travel down the transmission line towards the load. Their amplitude does not change over the length of the line. We can imagine that all or part of the wave will either be absorbed by the load or it will be reflected when it reaches the end of the line, in which case we can call the first reflected wave V1 minus, where the minus denotes that it's propagating in the minus Z direction. Say we, and it's also the first propagating wave in the minus z direction. That's why there's a one. Say we know V1 plus. We calculated it earlier using the voltage divider. Spend a couple minutes to see if you can figure out how much of the initial voltage wave will be reflected versus absorbed by the resistive load. Specifically, come up with an equation you can use to calculate V1 minus. If you want a hint, here's a hint. Ohm's law requires that the total voltage at the resistive load at Z equals L, the length of the, the end of the line, is related to the total current at the resistive load as follows. So at Z equals L at the load at the end of the line, we have the total voltage L at L over the total current at L has to be equal to RL the resistive load. That is your hint.